What's up, comic book community? Joe here, bringing you another episode of 360 Comics. Just yesterday, I got a random text out of the blue with someone trying to sell me some Batman comic books. And uh, as you can see right next to me, I ended up picking them up. They spanned from the late Silver Age through the early Bronze Age, and there were some major keys in there. I pulled out the 15 best books that I'm going to show you today. Stay tuned. We are less than 100 subscribers away from hitting our goal of 3,000, at which point we'll be giving this book away right here, the first appearance of the Thunderbolts in Incredible Hulk number 449. If you want to enter, all you have to do, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below, and you can check out our other videos, like them, and leave comments on them for additional entries. Also, head on over to Instagram, because we are about 100 followers away there from hitting our goal of 9,000. Thousand, at which point we're going to be giving away this book right here. Spider-Man and his amazing friends, number one, the first appearance of Firestar. Good luck in both of these giveaways. They're going to be hitting soon, so don't miss out. It's not often that I get a random text out of the blue like I did yesterday, but uh, apparently this guy got my number from one of his friends who I had bought comic books off of, and he said, oh, I've got some stuff too if you want to come over and look at it. And that is the power of networking, you know, having a good working relationship with people um, that, you know, I've purchased off of before, or even that I've sold comics to before. You know, it all, it all can come back to you, uh, and this was a great situation here. So, um, you know... There were a bunch of keys. The guy said that he started collecting in the 80s, so I figured it was going to be 80s stuff. But lo and behold, uh, he had actually been buying mostly back issues at that time. So it actually ranged from the late 60s uh, through the mid 70s. And uh, he had a big chunk of Batman um, complete. Issues 200 to 300 were complete. There were a couple other stragglers on, on either side of that run. Um, and he says he has more. So we, we got a deal made on this, which was great, but I'm going to have to go back for the, the, the other stuff once he finds it. He said it's tucked away in the garage or the basement or somewhere in, in storage, um, and he's going to have to get back to me on it. But I picked up this stuff. Uh, we'll go through, like I said, the 15 best books. Uh, in my opinion, it might not be the 15 most expensive, um, but they're, they're you know all the big ones are there. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, first up, we got Batman number 208, I think. I always forget the number of this one. These 80 page giants, they're sometimes hard to keep track of. Batman number 208. Now, this is uh, actually a story that compiles a bunch of reprints. So this is uh, reprinted stories, including uh, the first appearance of a bunch of female Batman villains. You can see Poison Ivy on the front as she's depicted on her first appearance. Just like what, like two years earlier, three years earlier in uh Batman number 181, uh, and this is this is like 208, so that's what, uh, barely over, not even 30 issues later. Um, but yeah, they, they saw the importance of these characters, and they wanted to reprint them, and they did that a lot in the this time period, the late, uh, late Silver Age, early Bronze Age. They were reprinting a lot of stories that, you know, maybe people missed out on the first time, so pretty cool there. Uh, it's got, I think there's four stories in this book, usually there are in those 80-page those giants. Uh, then we got another 80-pager right here. This is Batman number uh, 213. So just a few issues later, this is actually the 30th anniversary of Batman. This one has five stories in it, including the uh, origin of Robin. I believe that would be uh, his first appearance in Detective Comics number... 38. I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. Uh, this also has the classic story, The Man Behind the Red Hood, you can see right up there. One of the, the greatest uh, Batman stories of the Golden Age. So really cool to have that one. These these 80 pages are great. Lots of reading material. Um, you know, I, I definitely am probably going to try to find some time to read some of these stories that I haven't read or haven't read in a long time until, uh, you know, before I, I end up getting rid of this. Uh, moving on next, this was unfortunately one of the lower grade books in the collection, as you can see, plenty of spine ticks. Now, fortunately, most of the collection was a nice mid-grade, upper mid-grade, and even some stuff that I would consider high grade, um, but this one was pretty beat. This is Batman number, uh, what is this, 243? Yeah, 243, I think. Uh, this is the first uh, appearance of the Lazarus Pit, which has played such a big role in not just Batman lore, but also just DC lore in general over the years. Um, you know, 
most notably bringing a lot of characters back to life like Jason Todd and, and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, this is a, this is a pretty solid key. Uh, I already have a, a nice copy of this. So this one is, is going to, uh, to move on. Um, but this next one's cool too. This one's actually one of those hundred page giants from the bronze age. This is Batman number what? 258. Um, and this is the first mention of Arkham Asylum, but in this issue, it's referred to as Arkham Hospital. They use that for the first couple times that it, uh, that it's mentioned, uh, and then it changes to Arkham Asylum, I guess, to give it a more, like, ominous, uh, tone to it, but... Yeah, we've got this awesome cover featuring the, the you know the coin falling on Batman, Two Faces coin. Um, yeah, really really cool Bronze Age cover. You know, with the typical border around the edge and multiple like kind of panels on the cover. Cool stuff. Uh, you know, this was what like mid seventies or so. So, you know, some really really great content there. Um, you know, early appearance of like the most one of the most crucial locations in uh in the Gotham City area. Moving on, we've got uh Batman number 235. Now this is the second appearance of Raj al Ghul or Raj al Ghul, depending on how you pronounce it. I'm not telling anyone how to pronounce words, but anyway, uh yeah, really classic Bronze Age cover by Neil Adams, which he did a lot of covers that are cl considered uh, classic, iconic covers. Uh, this one I really, really like, especially given the perspective kind of right on the water with the, the, the cowl in the front and, uh, Batman kind of, you know, making that move out of the tree there. Gotta love it. Uh, this one goes back, actually the next two kind of go back to, uh, before Batman issue 200. I did mention that there was that chunk in there, but there were a couple before, including this key right here. This is, uh, Batman number 150. 48. Uh, this is a classic cover by uh, Shelley Moldoff, Sheldon Moldoff, who is one of my favorite Batman artists ever. Tons of great stuff during the Golden and Early Silver Age. Uh, and this one even has a Joker appearance on the cover, which uh, you know makes it all the more coveted by collectors. Same thing with this. This is issue number 186. I uh, forget who does the cover on this, but obviously a Joker appearance. And this is the first appearance of Gaggy the Clown. Uh, a character that was kind of meant to be Joker's sidekick, Joker's version of Robin, but didn't really stick. The character was brought back uh, multiple times, most notably, I, I think it was during this Gotham City Sirens run, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, we got Gaggy the Clown right on there with that stupid haircut and the weird nose. And yeah, I, I, you can see why he maybe didn't catch on. Uh, this next one, I have never found this book in the wild, uh, but this is Batman number 222. And this one has a, an unofficial, untitled, uh, unnamed appearance of a, a, a group that looks like the Beatles. We've got these four guys off to the side here uh, with, you know, similar haircuts and, and style to the Beatles. Uh, and then holding uh, a record that looks like it could be a Beatles record. And, uh, you know, this was around the time that the, it was rumored that a Beatle had died. I think it was Paul had uh, been rumored that he had been you know, he had died and then been replaced. Um, and I, 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 from what I remember, this story kind of plays on that it kind of, uh, does a little, you know, uh, connection to a real world thing that was happening, a little conspiracy theory that was happening at the time and just put it in the Batman lore. So I, I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, they even have the, the album cover on the front, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too much of a Beatles fan. So this probably isn't going to be something that I keep, um, but yeah, definitely something that a lot of collectors go for. Now I mentioned issue 200 to 300, and of course that's going to include issue 200 milestone issue and, uh, you know, really classic cover here featuring in the background, nine Batman covers from his, uh, his early appearances early in the run. Um, you know, some, some really classic covers, including the big one up there, Batman number one from 1940. And, uh, yeah, this was, uh. I think I want to say that this was Neil Adams' first time uh, doing the art on Batman, if I remember correctly. I think this is. Don't quote me on that. If I'm if I'm wrong, I apologize. But either way, it is a coveted issue. Uh, and then we're up to this one. This one we saw in the beginning of the video. Classic cover by Neil Adams, featuring Rachel Ghoul, featuring Batman laying on the ground, defeated. 
um, and featuring, for some reason, two pairs of bat pants. As you can see, uh, Rachel Ghoul's holding the Batman suit that has pants attached to it, but Batman is still wearing pants. Uh, originally, apparently, I heard, uh, last time I posted about this, this book, that Batman was originally drawn pantsless, and they said, oh, you can't do that, draw some pants on him, and they just drew some pants on him, didn't worry about the pants in the background, and that's how this ended up. Uh, you know, <laughs> who cares, whatever. Great cover, great story, classic battle between these two characters, um, and, you know, can't go wrong with that Neil Adams goodness from this time period. I should also shout out Denny O'Neill because he was writing these stories. Neil Adams was doing the artwork and they were a prominent creative team. Uh, we're down to the last five books here. The five best, I would say, in the whole batch. Um, and this one right here. I forgot the number on this one. What is this? Batman 237. This is the first appearance of the Reaper. And this is quite possibly the highest grade book in this collection. I think this is in the nines. I, I, I've never seen this book raw in this kind of condition. Uh, and for that reason, I might end up keeping this one just because of how nice it looks. Um, I already have a copy, but again, it, I might just upgrade my personal collection copy and keep this one and, you know, get it graded because I'm really curious to see how this will go back. There's like not a spine tick on it. Uh, and you know, even the, the edges and the corners and stuff look great. So we're going to have to do a little bit of thinking and see what I'm going to do with that. Uh, moving on another book that I already have. So this one will be for sale because this is lower grade than the one that I already have. This is Batman number, ah, man, I'm forgetting all these numbers, 234. Uh, a lot of people refer to this as the first silver age appearance of, uh, Two-Face, but this would have been the very early Bronze Age. Uh, this came out, I believe, just months after the the, the book that started the Bronze Age, which uh, is that Green Lantern, I think, 76 with that all green cover. That's kind of the, the kickoff point that most people go by. Um, and for that reason, this, this would have been an early Bronze Age book. Um, but a lot of people say first Silver Age or first, uh, you know, post golden age really he didn't appear in the silver age at all no two-face in the silver age there was one issue where batman dressed up as two-face but this is his uh real reintroduction and definitely a very very cool cover um at that with the, the big old two-face face there and this is like you know being drawn in in such detail really prior to this he wasn't drawn with this much you know detail on on his scars on his side of the face so yeah this is this is definitely a very coveted book uh, but man, we are down to the last three and these get just better and better. Batman number 251 is next. Uh, this is such a classic cover. You saw this in the thumbnail, uh, me doing my silly homage to this cover, but yeah, just absolutely classic Joker cover by Neil Adams with a Denny O'Neill story. And this is when they really brought the Joker back to his like homicidal origins. You know, he, he started off like, you know, crazy psycho guy. Then he was kind of made more silly in the 60s. You know, that, that whole thing happened during the, you know, the late 50s and early 60s where the Comics Code Authority was um, already pushing for stuff to become a little bit more kid friendly and, uh, you know, less violent, less uh, graphic. And uh, that coupled with the, the success of the silliness of the Batman television show, I really think pushed this character down to being more of a comical character like he was during the 60s, uh, especially the later half of the 60s. But they revamped him in the early 70s uh, in this issue, and they they did a good job because think about how that character is portrayed nowadays, not just in comics, but in, in film and, uh, you know, even in animation, you know, <laughs> the Batman animated series Joker is, uh, is certainly no clown, uh, pun intended. He is, is certainly creepy and crazy. Um, yeah, this, this is phenomenal. I, I, uh, I, I would love to keep this book, but this is one that I am going to sell. Um, because I have a, a grade in mind that I would like my copy to be. This does not hit the mark there. This is mid-grade, but um, you know, I, I would like a little bit higher grade of a copy of this book. Uh, I'll just tell you, I'm, I th I'm trying to get an 8.0 of this book. This is a really important book. It uh, would be a great part of my collection, and I would rather just wait it out and try to get that 8.0. So this one will be available for sale. Now this guy right here, 
I picked this up a couple months ago. I picked up a 7-0 graded copy, if you remember. Uh, this is Batman number 3, sorry, 232, the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul, whatever, whatever you want to call him. I always hear people saying different ones, so... Um, yeah, I, I think it really matters when you got into Batman. Like during that Dark Knight, you know, uh, Christopher Nolan movies, they were pronouncing it Ra's al Ghul. So I think the people that really got into the character at that point, uh, they're going to be pronouncing it that way. But whatever. I Listen, I don't care. I don't care how you pronounce it. But classic Neil Adams cover. Again, a Denny O'Neill story. Again, the first appearance of a major character. This is his true first appearance. This was not like first Silver Age or first Bronze Age or anything. This character did not appear prior to this. Uh, and for that reason, really, uh, you know, this stands out as a book from that time period because a lot of the characters were just Golden Age characters brought back, whereas this one was a brand new character. And the fact that it has this all green background cover, that just really makes it hit. Now, this last one, uh, this last book coming up, the best book, in my opinion, in the bunch, um, not just because of price, but also because, personally, I am keeping this one. This is going in my PC because I've never owned a copy of this book, and this one is sharp, too. I'm thinking this is, like, minimally a 6.0. I think it could. I, I think this could get, like, a 7.0, maybe even a 7.5, uh, somewhere in that range. Got to see what cleans up and what presses out, but we got Batman number 227, a book that is iconic, just because of the cover. There is nothing key about this book other than how classic this cover is. And it's not even really a truly original cover. This is an homage to uh, one of the early, early appearances of Batman. Uh, I think it's, if I remember correctly, Detective Comics 31. I think that's the number. Don't quote me on that, though. Um, but yeah, Neil Adams absolutely killing it. His... Most iconic cover, arguably this and the the Joker card cover, um, are are the two that really stand out the most. Um, but you know, this one with no other real key significance other than the cover holds so much value. This is like the Bronze Age equivalent of that uh, the Todd McFarlane Batman cover, uh, issue number four twenty three. Um, you know, that, that book, again, there's no significance other than it's a classic McFarlane Batman cover. This one being the classic Neil Adams Batman cover. Uh, like I said, this is staying in the personal collection because that's why we do this stuff. You know, I'm not out here trying to, you know, make a living off of comics. This is all just to fund my hobby, fund my collecting. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love it when I can find stuff. And if you've been watching recently, those amazing Spider-Man books I got in the last video, a couple videos ago when I got uh, that first appearance, uh, first cover appearance of Two-Face, that Golden Age uh, Detective Comics book, uh, you know, just the stuff that you want for the PC. Finding that stuff is what makes this this hunt and this, uh, you know, this whole effort that I put in waking up real early on the weekends to go out searching for comic books and, and all that, you know, time consuming sorting and stuff makes it all worth it. And, you know, it's, it's also been like a great experience to, uh, be able to pass a lot of those books on to other people. And, you know, it's great that I can sell them for money and, you know, be able to fund more comic books. Um, but yeah, just, you know, making friends in the community has been really awesome. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent about something that this doesn't even have to do with, but, uh, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, let me know what you think about this collection. Um, oh, uh, and uh, a lot of this, like I said, will be up for sale. I do want to make a note of something. Fridays, I usually do my claim sales. That's not going to be the case this week because the new Magic the Gathering set comes out. Not only that, but I'll be unboxing a box, a collector's box of the new Magic the Gathering set, which could have a $2 million Magic card in it. I'm live, live streaming that 530 on uh, Friday from my LCS before the tournament starts. Um, and because of that tournament, I'm not doing a Friday claim sale, but I am doing one. I'm going to try to do one tonight. This is Thursday right now when I'm uh, releasing this video. So I'm trying to do one Thursday. If I don't get to it Thursday, I will definitely do one Saturday. And even if I do one Thursday, I might do that Saturday. Anyway, I'm rambling again. Like this video on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And until next time, turn the page. 
wash your hands.